Another episode of Weekend Beat Time Where we turn some of these Into beautiful beats, man So join me this week, guys And without further ado This is Weekend Beat Time What's up, guys? Welcome back, man Welcome back to another episode of Weekend Beat Time, man You know what I mean? We're always messing around with these things And making beats And just having a bit of fun with it, man I basically get together uh, We basically get together And I make a beat And I show you all the you know, tricks of the trade, well, whatever the hell I've come across and what I've learned over the years, man. So, if you want to continue seeing these videos, man, please, you know, hit that thumbs up button and uh, hit the subscribe button. You know, every week we get together. This is weekend beat time, all right? Now, this week, guys, what I have planned is I'm basically going to show you how to flip a sample. But, um, obviously, we're going to put the drums together first, man, and that's always an intricate process. I'm going to show you guys how to get this rhythm. And um, and then we're gonna get a sample, and the sample is uh, limited because of the scale and because of the rhythm that's on it. So I'll show you how to pluck out little bits and pieces out of your main sample so that you could flip it and create a chorus and a verse, man. You know what I mean? So you guys can create a full beat out of it, man. So uh, let's just get straight into it, guys, man. Um, sorry, my apologies, uh, my apologies, sorry, because um, the video is a little bit late. But it's all good. I'm pretty sure my YouTube algorithm is all fucking thrown off and shit. But it shouldn't matter too much, man. But this won't be the only one for this week, man. I'll flip another one for this coming week as well, alright? So, don't sweat it too much, man. Alright, guys. Let's just jump into it, man. And um, hope you guys like the video. Peace. Alright, guys. So, we're going to uh, start putting together a couple of drums. Uh, this is the sample that we're using. It's um, the Basie Beat is the name of the, 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 the album itself. And it's by Shirley Basie, all right? That's Shirley and then Basie with B-A-S-S-E-Y. All right, guys? Shirley Basie, and the track is called That's Life. All right, I'm going to put it on. I'm going to show you just uh, how I'm extracting these uh, these drums. So we're doing something a little bit different. Let's get that drum nice and clean, all right? All right, guys. That's guys, what I have here is something a little bit unconventional, right? It's almost like the Supreme style of music, right? And what I'm getting out of that, I'm getting the hi-hat, right? It's got a really nice hi-hat on it. Um, now, one problem that I'm having with this is that the hi-hat is clear and plays on its own in a very, very, very short time, right? That's not a problem because we can chop. Now, what I wanted to show you guys is this, right? The track plays on stereo, all right? Now, let me just see if I can show you this. The track plays on stereo. Meaning, out of the two speakers, now, look, I'm really simplifying this, alright? I'm not getting into the, the full technicality of it. A, because uh, I just want to keep it broad, and B, because I probably don't know it. <laughs> so, the thing is, we've got the two, the two uh, speakers are playing like this, the two waveforms, to create the stereo spectrum. And we basically have, like, the vocals are in the center, you've got other bits and pieces, some are panned to the left, could be the drums on the right could have like a trumpet playing over here in the background. They kind of space it out in the um, in that spectrum. What happens is, is that when we're sampling, we're sampling all of this, right? But my hi-hat is probably playing just on this, in this particular track, it's only playing on one side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sample it. So I'm only sampling that one side. I'm only sampling the right or just the left side. I'm going to show you guys how it kind of sounds a little bit different. The point of us doing that is to avoid spill and to make sure that we center everything. Because the panning left and right and adding all that and creating our own spectrum here when we're mixing uh, later on, that's, you know, we want everything to be reset. Everything in the middle. You know what I mean? And then we'll pan and do all that other crap, alright? So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to try to isolate this bit. In the track, <clears throat> but listen to how on one side you can't really hear the drums, and on the other side you can. That's what 
people say. It's not drunk. You're riding high in April. Now you can Shut get... down in May. But I know I'm gonna change that. That's the difference, guys. The difference is is that when we're playing it on the right, in this case, when we're playing the right side of the speakers, we're able to hear it. It's just because of the way that it's mixed. So I'm going to sample just that right side, you know what I mean? And avoid a lot more of the vocals. It seems like the piano and the bass has been mixed more to the left and the hi-hats has been and drums have been mixed more to the right. So that's, that's one way of you being able to isolate things and be able to pick them up. Same goes if you guys are trying to sample a uh, vinyl, um, sorry, um, piano or something. If you're listening to a jazz track, sometimes it's good. Just flick it to the right or flick it to the left. Disconnect one speaker, whatever it is, and try to uh, try to see if there's a difference between the left and the right. Most of the time there is, especially with jazz. All right. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and sample that small little uh, hi hat part. All right. Cool. Now I've got that. Now here's another thing. I've, I had a, I have a snare here, all right. Now this is George Benson, "Give Me the Night," and the tra that's the album, and the track is "Love X Love." I used this vinyl last week, right? One thing that I did was uh, I noticed that when I used that track, I didn't use it for the snare, but when I found that track, I uh, as I was listening to it, sorry. I heard the snare at the start and I was like, oh damn, I could use that in the future. So what I like to do sometimes is I just, oh damn, too much light there. What I like to do sometimes, you see that? I circle the track and I write what it is that I found it. You don't want to do that with all your samples, but this really works well, man. I just wrote snare. So just to remind me um, th that, you know what, you could find something there, man. So I've referred back to this. I'm gonna find my snare, which I know exactly where it is, because it's right at the start. You hear that? You hear that? Now my needle skips. All right, I'm just gonna quickly show you something. Now if you look right here, guys, I've got a massive gash here, man. This shit looks like Zub Zero, right? With this massive gash right here on um on my on my record, and what it causes is it causes my my uh, record to skip. Right? See, I can't sample properly. One way you can do that is obviously you can try to clean uh, this as much as possible. Another little trick that you can do is just to rest your finger, man, ever so gently. Rest your finger on top of the stylus. That way you can keep it inside the groove. You kind of force it to stay in the groove. See that? It doesn't skip. If you press too much on it though, what you will do is you'll cause it to muffle and you won't you won't get the nice fidelity of the <clears throat> of the needle passing through the grooves lightly the way it's meant to. You're gonna muffle out the sound a bit, so just try to do it uh, and um, try to practice that just a little bit. All right, all right, cool, cool. So now I'm gonna sample it. Record finger on it. That's it. Yeah, you could probably you probably would have heard. That when the music actually started coming in, it started warping it a little bit. Um, that's because I have my finger on it, right? But the point is, we've got the snare now. So we've got the hi-hat and the snare. The other one had a bit of a kick on it. I think with the kick, I'm not too fussy with the kick, man. Because usually when I play, when you play kicks on vinyl, they're not really, really bursty. And they haven't got a, a lot. Of, they don't pack a lot of punch. So I don't mind. I might just use the kick that's already there. And I might just stack it with another one. But the point is, we've got our drum kit now. I haven't got like stacks and stacks of hi-hats. That's all right, man. You know what I mean? It's just a bit of fun. We're making a quick beat. All right, let's keep going. Cool. So um, <clears throat> I was just flicking through, trying to find a main sample, something that I'd like to, like to use, something as a bass. Uh, and as I was going through some records, um, I found this one. Uh, it's basically a string sample. This. I thought it'd be cool, man, to use it on top of our... Um, on top of our bass sample, it might give us a nice chorus or something like that. Now, I don't know if you guys recognize this record. I've been using this one for the last couple of toots, man. I don't really like to pick records out at random and then just use them, put them back on the shelf. I actually like to really, really just thrash that record, man, and just go through it 
uh, with the fine tooth comb and just try to find all the drums, all the little bits and pieces. And I try to use that record as much as possible. Sometimes with a record like this that has about 10 different tracks, I could get upwards of about maybe 30, 40 beats um, uh, of use out of this. You know what I mean? So, you know, don't, don't, I mean, each to their own. But if I were in your shoes, I would try to make sure that I use the record as much as possible because it kind of forces you to uh, use your ears and use your taste to create different sort of beats and to know what you're looking out for. It's really an art form to be able to train your ears, not just to play things in tune like if you were an instrumentalist, but um, to be able to have an ear out for samples, you know what I mean? To, to create that image in your mind. The track, the track guys, is um, this one. There Be Love by Grant Rand. All right, it's in 1962. That's the track there. That was it then, that's the sound. All right, cool, let's keep going. Guys, I ended up finding the kick anyway, and the snare, which uh, is pretty good, man. Um, it's by this fella here, Neil Pointer. Neil Pointer, and uh, the album's called Fantasia. See what I mean? Look, this should be an aspiration in every man and woman out there, man. If you ever wanna make an album, you should be on the front cover without a shirt holding your violin. You know what I mean? Man, this guy has balls, man. I wouldn't take my shirt off, man. Not even at the beach. All right. And the track is called Fiddler on the Roof. Fiddler on the Roof. All right. That sounds, that sounds like some fucking stalker on the roof, man. But that's the track. I'm going to show you guys the sample. It's pretty dope. Pretty dope. Check this out. Oh shit. So yeah, good drums, man. Good drums. I won't play too much because I don't want uh, copyright to start being activated on my uh, on my YouTube. All right. Cool guys. So what I've done is um, I've taken that sample and uh, of the drums and then I've gotten the drums from that previous sample which is this one a hi-hat uh, which is that double hi-hat and then I've got those snares that were from the George Benson right I put them all on the one program all in the one group so I can listen to them all at the one time and then I'll be able to tune down I'll be able to put a little bit of low pass I'll be able to EQ them um, according to the taste, according to what I need the drum kit to do, you know what I mean, and how I need it to perform in terms of its uh, bass, treble, and mids, and all that sort of stuff, alright man, so I'm just going to go ahead and start putting together a sequence, I am, um, yeah, fuck it, let's just start putting together a sequence. Now I have two snares, actually I've got four, but I'm going to stack two of them together. So it's going to be four drums all up, but stacked as a pair, all right? I like to vary the, the snares, man. I find that beats, uh, the drums especially, don't carry too much rhythm um, if you don't change up the snares as much as possible, man. So, I mean, I, I just like it. Yeah, I think it adds rhythm. So, for example, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to go through two of those. All right, cool. I'm going to stack every second snare, right? You see what I mean? Using the different ones. Starting from the bottom. Dun, 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 dun. So down the bottom first and then up. You see? One's lower, one's higher. Lower, higher. Yeah, I'm just going to experiment with that, all right? bring the levels down because he said this one's too high this one is too high so I'll bring the volume down just a tad man just just a tad you see we it's it's only we're only putting on the first layer which is the snare and we've already got four different things happening in it all right now that's what we want to do we'll just keep adding rhythm and uh adding melody 
Now I'm going through my drums, right? Now this one, it's got a hi-hat that's just at the end of this pad. But it's got a little bit of noise at the start. So I'm going to quickly get rid of that. See? That's it, on its own. Right? And I've got this one. Which is from another, from, from the original sample. And I put a high pass. Because without it, this is what it sounds like without the high pass, right? It's got that bass coming through. Too noisy. So, I'll put that in it. Now these are my two hi-hats. I gotta create a rhythm out of those two, alright? Now I've decided to take my kick. Right? And do my kick first. The hi-hats are gonna be a little bit tricky, man, because they're not clean hi-hats. So I need to figure out how I'm gonna fit them in nicely into my sequence, right? The one the two things that I do have nice and clear is my kick. And I have my snares. Right? Actually, this kick has a little bit of a hi-hat at the end of it. Alright? So I'm going to use my kick and communicate with my snare to create a rhythm first, and then I'll use the hi-hats and try to slot them in to, to fill the rhythm up a little bit more. I feel like that's probably going to be a better way for me to achieve a nice rhythm. Alright? I'm going to do that. So I got the rhythm down, right? And, um... Part of that, one of those drum kits that I had was, um, well, out of the break or whatever it was, the sample. It's got like those, those bits and pieces. These funny sounds, right? So you can, add, I, I can add them in the future if I want, right? You know what I mean? Make it nice and funky or whatever. I'm not sure if that's going to suit the, the beat. So I'm just going to keep creating. And then I could always go back and add the little bits and pieces. What I like to call the sprinkles. All right. So let's, let's just start putting some rhythm into it. We've already got the drums in. Now the kick rhythm is this. Right. This is the kick rhythm. That's the kick rhythm, right? And that's, if you use that kick rhythm, that's going to give you this sort of feel. Alright guys, here's the thing, right? I got my sequence here. I got my sequence. Now, with this type of sequence, it's got a piano running through it, right? So what that's going to do is, uh, because it has a piano and it's playing an actual scale, it's going to give us a really definite, a really definite rhythm, uh, which is not that good if you want to change it up, man. If it was giving us chords, it would be all right. Like our ears would be okay just listening to four chords. You can check out my last video on 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 finding sort of um, four chord um, samples. But this one here hasn't got four chord samples. What 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 the piano is doing is giving us a. a um, scale. So what it's doing is it's giving us a really obvious rhythm, right? And what we need to do is we need to manipulate the sample a little bit differently to what we will normally do. So what I normally do is I stack. I find a four chords or I find a bass sample or something and then I go and I put chorus on top and then maybe some scenes and whatever. I just keep stacking. With something like this, what we need to do is change-ups, man. We need to do change-ups. That's something really common. I know like uh, DJ Premier, I remember when I first started listening to DJ Premier, it was really obvious to me that this guy would, um, he wouldn't stack much. You know, he would have his drums, he would have his uh, samples, and he'd change up the samples and the way that he'd play the samples, depending on whether somebody was in a chorus or in a, um, or in a verse. Now, Listen, man, I'm not saying that I know everything about DJ Premier, all right? I respect the man, and the man is, is obviously is, is fantastic at what he does. What I am saying is is that that's just the first time I ever heard of something like that, all right? So, let me just run through the rhythm of what I put together, 
and let's uh and let's troubleshoot how we can get more rhythm out of this. So this is the rhythm here. See what I'm saying? Uh, we need to change that up. Now this is this is how I've uh, sort of come up with the sequence. I don't want it to be too busy because I, I want it to just uh, give some space to the drums, to the rhythm, so that the person who's performing on the track or the person who's listening to can have a break from the melody of the of the of the uh, of the piano you know what i mean coming in and out jamming now this is the sequence that i've come up with here right see there's a break all right now let me explain why that break is there all right let me explain that the reason why i have um this and then there's a break is because after it the piano starts playing right see the piano keeps playing so it's too busy right and i don't want piano i don't want the presence of piano so what i want to do is i just want to leave the strings and the reason why i have that break is because i intend on grabbing this putting it on 16 levels and filling in that gap with a nice echo, right? And that's going to be my sequence. So my sequence is going to go something like this, right? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to echo out because I haven't got enough pads to continue on with the rhythm. So one trick you can do is just grab that last pad that you used and where you need to fill that 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 void, right? Because you haven't got other pads to hit, just put that pad on echo, man, and it does give it a nice dynamic. You grab that pad, I put it on 16 levels cuz I like to do like a manual sort of echo or delay. And then I just fade out. Now you can do that on your computers or whatever it is that you're using. And you can do it um, set to 1 16th or, or 1 quarter or whatever it is, man. But I like to manually do it. Right? Just fade it out manually. If you haven't got 16 levels and you've got velocity, so it's touch sensitive, your keys or whatever it is, just set it to that and then just... Just go from hitting it hard to then just tapping it a little bit lighter and lighter. You'll get yourself a, a nice echo. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and lay that down. All right, man. So let's hear the change up. All right. This is how the change up will fit like on an actual track. Look at that. Lay down. Remember that break? Remember that break that I had? I had to come with all the sort of funky sounds. This is the time to use at least one. See that? It 
sounding, it starts sounding nice, you know, adding these little bits and just jamming along. You know what? I'm going to add that to it. Um, I'm going to add that to it, man. And then um, we'll see what we'll do next, all right? Hey guys, <clears throat> I don't want to take up too much of your time, too much of mine, man. I've got, I've got to get things done as well. But I just wanted to make a quick video as well for you guys uh, because it was a little bit late. But I'll be bringing out another one after this one, man. So don't worry about it. Um, let's just go through the track. But basically, it's grabbing the one sample and uh, flipping it twice, man. You know what I mean? And uh, doing it so we can get a little bit more out of it. And it's not just a simple loop, especially because we're trapped by the uh, by the piano scaling. All right. So uh, let's just go through it. I put a little bit of bass on it. Did a couple of little things. Sounds good. up to you know what I mean put that funk on it guys man well thank you so much for tuning in again my apologies for uh for it being a little bit late man my bad my bad um just lacked a little bit of motivation man but i got on the ball you know what i mean it's all about the work ethic man so guys thanks again for tuning in i hope you learned something man i hope you guys picked up on a thing or two i think next week we'll focus a little bit more on on bass man i got something special planned for that so we'll just do that guys you guys take care of yourselves man thanks again for tuning in man Please hit that subscribe button guys, please as always man, I really appreciate you guys sharing, so if you can do that for me man, keep the culture going, keep the beat making culture going man, you fellas take care of yourself, everyone take care of themselves man, and I'll catch you next time alright, peace. Uh huh, but yeah.